we've been in lockdown. Um, this is part five of going around the UK in a tiny speedboat. Look at that. Get the streamer out down here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is massive. They've relaxed the lockdown, so uh, we're now allowed out to do unlimited water sports and speedboating. My guest this week is no stranger to Goodwin. My sister is joining us, Lizzie. <laughs> This thing is a beast. Oh, what? You're delivering it? Yes. Yeah, we're just doing a handover at the moment. Oh, so did you make it? Yeah, yeah, with a manufacturer, yeah. All right, so you're from Ribcraft? From Ribcraft, yes. Wow. You must be a very happy man. Very happy man. <laughs> very nervous man. <laughs> so this is its maiden voyage. This is your first... Well, they've sea trialed it twice. Right. Certainly probably a lot more comfortable than our one. But well, I anyway. hope so. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching you on the... Have you? Yeah. Hi Liz! Hi! Look at that! Thank you very much. No worries, have a safe trip. Okay. going to pop over here for a quick tour of Drake's Island, an old Napoleonic fortress. The island is privately owned and for the last 30 years it's been lying empty. Drake's Island. What do you think of Drake's Island? Liz? It's beautiful. Here's Drake's Island. It's a big old ruined fortress. Um, the Ministry of Defence sold it in the 1970s and it's since changed hands. I wish I owned it basically. On there is the owner of the island, Morgan, he's going to give us a tour. Come on Liz. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think we'll be all right here on the um, beach? No. Because <laughs> as the your tide boat, comes in... Your boat will get washed away. Right? Yeah. I'm going to tie it on the ladder. Oh dear, classic problem here. This is... Uh, I think something went in the water. Look at this door. Wow. <laughs> oh, look at this. And you come out into this sort of garden. Yeah. Right. God, it's a big project. I don't think this light switch works anymore. Oh, look. <laughs> Mm. 
you see, because what you've got is the block work, and then look at this. Look at that. So that's proper. Oh, that's so that's Tudor. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be Tudor, or maybe a bit later. God, it's idyllic, isn't it? It really does feel like we're in Corfu or something. So what era are these? These ones are early 1800s, yeah? Okay. Oh, so this would have swiveled on here. Yeah. Amazing that rifling as well there. Yeah. Right, so this is the lower, sorry, the upper gun batteries, lower tunnels, yeah? Wow. So it's just a short, Expands this way here. Well, this is all um, Victorian. So this is what would be called a ready magazine. In fact, it's got uh, Look at that. ammunition store. Is that what is it? Say? Something? Is that like an R G E range? Range store, yeah, it could be that. This one's right. it's, uh, it's a gun store. What era is that, do you think? Um, that's Second World War. Wow. Or for, uh, maybe in First World War. <laughs> and what these would have been, they would have been glass door on that, and the lamps would have been sat behind it. Yeah, so that you put the lamp in and shut the door. Wow. Because there's obviously, obviously with all the gunpowder knocking around. Yeah. Well, th this is this is early, very early 1800s. So they would have bought the ammunition up and down in that. I can, you can see the sort of cradle at the back. So basically ammunition would come up here and then into that stores like that, ready to feed the guns above. It would be scary here on your own, wandering around. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, might, I might draw the line at that on my own. <laughs> no, I think it's nice and cool down here. Oh, yeah. Right, so this is a much longer stuff, isn't it? Oh wow. And again, you've got the ready magazine thing to the oh, shell that. you put on there and then shot up to the gun. The, the chain is so rusted, isn't it? That's amazing. And so that's, do you think that's World War II? Could be, oh, it could be World War I. Certainly no, no before, not before that. Oh, and this is where the cable ran down here, presumably. Like telephone lines. Yes, and... that, that would have been power back in the cables, yeah. Another, another waste. So here we go, so I would be here. Operating this, yes. So it would come down like that, and they're like, right, here we go. Well, then take it like that. Well, we're going the other way because the guns are above you. Oh yeah, of course. The shell on here, yeah. Pointy end out this way, that up into the hoist, and then the winch mechanism will take the shell up to the gun. Right. Up. You can literally ride your, your kind of horse and cart down here, pretty much. <laughs> So do you have a kind of plan for what you would do down here? Um, the, the current planning says these are hotel rooms. Right. There could still be Tudor rooms underneath here intact. <laughs> We're going in the tunnel. There's, these are quite extensive tunnels, but I'll just take you from the main bit. Oh, I, want to, I want to go down every bit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not quite sure now. Yeah. Well, we can look at the video and see which way we went and work our way back. We get... Look at this. Hello. Okay, you want to tell what we came in on. See, so, so this is, if you think, God. it's quite a long way to carry ammunition, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but the magazines are just around here. Right. deep magazine that then takes it up to the lower magazine and then up to the guns. Right, so we're deep inside the kind of rock at yeah. the moment. Long way down. Wow, look at this. Mm. What we think that was, was for putting the round rods for the guns. Right, yes, because the they're really long, yeah. yeah. 
What do you think you could do with this? Um, well, the plan says uh, to turn that into a um, spa. Oh, of course, because you don't need any windows. Yeah. yeah. Quite disorientating. Yeah, you never know where you're going to pop up. Right. But you know you're, you're way around everywhere now. Uh, not, well, what I know is enough to know that I know about 70% of it. Really? Because, yeah, presumably, like, there's all sorts of bits like that window there. Where does that go? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I haven't found that bit yet. <laughs> so on this bit. Look at that. Get the strimmer out down here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A little bit overgrown. Oh, watch that. The brambles there, Liz. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Good. Look at that. So go. we just walked all the way around that so curve bit. Yeah. Come all the way around that gun battery. Well, thank you very much for showing us around. This is. Um, I'm very jealous. I want my own island. I could highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, when next time we come back. Um, We'll be having a dip in the pool. Anytime, anytime you're passing, please drop in and yeah, see us. Yeah, we will. OK, we seem to be all right there. Off we go. Bama, here we come. The wind's supposed to die down a bit soon. So we're setting a route to Paul Paro. We're off. It's really nice, isn't it? Look at that glassy water. So we're out, heading out past the breakwater. So the first stop is maybe Pol Perro. Oh. Off we go out to sea. Look, here we go, getting a nice little swell. Look at this, so smooth. This is the calmest day ever. Let's get rid of our seaweed. Stations, Here we go. Coast Guard for the Maritime Safety Information Broadcast. This is um, HF Channel 64. Okay, there we go. Poor Ops. So calm, Liz, isn't it? Yeah. Eerily quiet, though. Eerily quiet, though. A bit of cloud coming up. Is there? Liz is worried about the cloud down here. A large area of high pressure will bring fine and quiet conditions to most areas during the next couple of days. Time on board Goodwin. Time for the club bus. Hey Liz, welcome to the club. I haven't had one of these for a while. They're good actually, aren't they? Yeah. We've made it to the harbour town of Lou, L O O E, not like a toilet. Over here is Lou Island and it's a private island and now a nature reserve. Occupation on Lou Island has been going on since the Iron Age. We're just going around the island here, but look at the detail we're getting on the depth gauge. You can see the patterns in the sand, you can see the rocks. I definitely think if there was a shipwreck down there, you could see it, couldn't you? To Polparo and beyond. Over there, there are some jet skis going very fast. Now that it's a bit more summery, um, there's a lot more water traffic, mostly fishermen, but just occasionally there's some people in jet skis doing about 600 miles an hour. And uh, it just occurred to us that if they hit us, we probably wouldn't do very well. This is Talon Bay home to daytime TV stars Richard and Judy. This is their home when they're not in London. It looks very nice. Hello Richard, hi Judy. 
We're just entering the harbour town of Polperro, famous for smuggling. Right, switching off. We're just tied up to this boy here. Very nice. Smokers. Goddamn smokers. It's quite hot, isn't it? Very hot. It's a bit of a shame we haven't got any shade, but we do have a brolly. Polpero is very famous for uh, smuggling. In the 18th century, it was um, the hotbed of illegal contraband. Over there is Willie Wilcox's cave. He was a local fisherman and legend has it that uh, he disappeared in the caves one night in a storm when he was trying to um, hide some of his contraband. Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. What is it? It's a uh, sea sport. Sea sport. Yeah. Look at that. You've been watching the videos. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's over here. Atlantic Bay, just next to Foy. Oh. <laughs> You're right, Liz. Okay, I'll get my shorts on. Well, I'm thinking I could just chuck it. Okay. Get over in that shade, Liz. You trying to look cool? Yeah. <laughs> Gents was on the beach. This is basically like James Bond having a pasty on the beach. There are boats, there are beautiful people. Right, time to go. Back on the boat, Liz. Yeah. We've had a lovely time on this beach. It's time to get to Falmouth by a foy. We've got another 25 miles to go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Whereabouts are you guys from? Oh, really? uh, oh, right. There's a lot of castles, forts and big cliffs. Such an easy drive with this weather, we can press on to Falmouth.
another one ticked off the list. Cornwall has a lot of very nice, pretty fishing villages. It's so calm and kind of hazy, it's, um, it's a little bit spooky, isn't it? Is it spooky? A little bit. But very nice as well. I think this is Goran Haven just coming up on the right, and then we're going to be going round um, Godman Point. That would be a more comfortable way to go around the UK. But would it be as fun? Oh, they are storming into power. River foul. What can I say? Goodwin is in very good company here in Falmouth. Um, there's a lot of very salubrious vessels. Probably some with more gadgets than Goodwin. That's the world over there, that classic giant cruise ship where you can buy a flat and then it cruises the world. Over there, there is a very large sailing boat. We made it. Another 50 miles chipped off the old block. Um, that was the easiest one yet. A bit too easy. I'm not sure there's going to be too many nice days like that. Thanks for coming, Liz. We're now very near the corner of Land's End when we're going to be going up. I don't know what you the... complain about, Harry. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> True. We'll be out again. Not sure when, but um, I know where from Falmouth on. <laughs>